All right, guys, inside the paint booth and uh, got all this stuff masked and the uh, candy sprayed on it or base, whatever, whatever it's getting. And I thought I would uh, give you a, as Austin Lanier would say, a semi-pro tip. So I've got these and these, you know, they look like they needed to be cut as individual letters, but working with individual letters is kind of a pain. So as you see on the screen, I did a little offset on this in the CAD and created this little out, you know, this little really thin border, but it gives kind of the look of, you know, that the letters are, are uh, individual in there without, you know, having that, I don't know, the look of a normal dropout without having to deal with individual letters. So the first thing I did is I joined them together. Well, I, I offset the outside of this, separated it out, joined them together. So now I've got, you know, a longer piece that I can cut and manage, run through the belt sander, that kind of thing. Now that I have the belt sander, I pay a lot more attention to how long something is because this will not go through the belt sander. It needs to be at least 12 inches long to go through there. Uh, so, but really the, the, so there's one semi pro tip for you. Uh, the second semi pro tip is now that you have this little thing, how are you going to join that together and make it stay? Well, one of the common things in automotive painting that you have to watch for uh, is bridging across your masking, uh, bridging across the edge of something. So, I mean, if I paint this right here in clear and I put four or five coats of clear on there like I normally do, well, where all these edges are touching here, it's going to, the clear is going to sort of bridge across it and I won't be able to lift that off. And just about every paint job, I bridge the edge on something and you just have to take it a little exacto knife and cut the bridge because if you just lift it off of there, it, it could possibly lift the paint right off with it. So you gotta cut across the bridge. But in this particular case, we want a bridge. We want a controlled bridge. So I'm gonna come back and show you how to do this. And that way we don't have to worry about mounting this in, in some kind of way. Um, Cause it's so thin around the edge, there's nothing really that you could do. I mean, you could try to epoxy it, but epoxy is gonna you know, run out from under the edge. You'll be able to see it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna come back and show you this in a minute. I'm gonna dust a little bit of a light coat of clear on there just to get a little wet bed in there. And I'm gonna set this down in the clear. I'm not gonna clear this. Set this down in the wet clear and then the whole thing will get cleared together. And that will bridge all around the uh, insides of this letters. And trust me, you will never get that off of there. It will never come loose. It'll be all embedded in one coat. So. Let's, uh, let's get the spray in here and I'll come back and show you that. So now we have that, let me show you that real quick. We just have this sitting on a little cushion there. So that it won't bridge, because it, it being so small and flat, it's gonna want to. And we don't want that to, we want the other piece to bridge to it. All right, so I'm not gonna have the paint booth on. I'm just gonna dust a little bit of clear on that piece. down here close and uh, see if I can set this in here without it, uh, without making too big of a All right, now I'm going to turn the paint booth on and, and really fog some clear on it. This is a couple hours later, and uh, 
that is one unit now completely bridged and just a quick look at some of the other pieces here man that blacks laid out really nice you can see that light reflecting in it almost look like a mirror doesn't it look at some of this handiwork here just some little brush details of some color that will show up behind that should look pretty cool when it's done